pink gin. We're making three different versions of it in this video. Oh, and we're gonna be uh, tasting them all next to the original gin, of course. If you don't know what pink gin is, well, you will by the end of this video. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and these are a couple of pink gins that I've just made, which are pretty damn delicious. We're gonna be tasting them at the end of the video next to the original gin. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made them. But just first, uh, pink gin can get a little bit of a bad rap because a lot of the commercial examples out there are lolly water. The gin flavored with generally some kind of berry extract with uh, food coloring and a buttload of sugar in them. That's not what we're doing today. Because this is Still It, which is primarily a distilling channel, I am of course going to be distilling the gin that we're going to use for this in this video. But if you're following along at home and you uh, don't want to distill or you're just not able to distill, you can of course just go out and buy a bottle of commercial gin to follow along with at home. That's no problem whatsoever. There's a few caveats that are gonna pop up during the course of the video. But let's get stuck into the ingredients, shall we? Seeing as we have to make the gin first, let's talk gin ingredients. First, I'm gonna be using two liters of 70% ABV vodka. I'm using the spirit that I made in the last video, the wheat and barley vodka. Obviously, use whatever works for you, that's fine. Botanicals for the gin. I'm using a pre-made mix that I bought from a guy named Soren in Auckland. Uh, if you're in New Zealand and you're in this game, you probably know who he is. There's a link in the description down below where you can buy exactly the same stuff if you want to. If, however, you're not in New Zealand, you're not gonna be able to get that. So feel free to use your own blend of botanicals. I would recommend starting somewhere around the 65 to 70% juniper, eight to 15% coriander seed, four to 12% citrus peel if you're using a fresh peel, less obviously if you're using the dried stuff, four to 12% of one of the roots, so licorice, orris, angelica, something like that. And if you want to, feel free to add in a small amount of cardamom, cinnamon bark, aniseed, fennel seeds, whatever works for you. Long story short though, you're going to need 70 grams total of botanicals. After the gin is made, we're gonna to need to make it pink, obviously. Uh, I'm using berries today, so we're gonna need 150 grams of strawberries, 100 grams of raspberries, and 250 grams of blueberries. Those berries are gonna color things up beautifully, but right now it's time to talk about a different kind of color. Clocks and Colors, in fact, who happen to be the sponsor of today's video. They make a whole range of men's and women's kick-ass rings, chains, bracelets, that kind of thing. Uh, you guys would have seen in a bunch of my videos, I've been wearing the Tortuga ring for quite a while now, but I also have a new piece. This one is kind of special to me. When I first started watching YouTube, one of my buddies put me onto a guy called Peter McKinnon, who at the time was a tiny little YouTuber with about, I don't know, 10,000 subscribers or something. And I learned a buttload from him. I learned all about videography and all about YouTube and just this kind of media. Anyway, long story short, this guy has blown up. He's huge now. And funnily enough, this ring is actually a collaboration between Peter McKinnon and Clocks and Colors. So. I don't know, it just kind of seems fitting that this is my favorite ring. Anyway, the good news is that Clocks and Colors are giving away a $500 voucher to one of you guys to spend on their website. All you need to do is be a subscriber to my channel and you need to sign up to the Clocks and Color newsletter using the special link in the description down below. Even better, everyone that signs up on that newsletter gets $40 to spend on their website straight off the bat. The prize will be drawn and the winner will be notified one week from the day this video goes live. So get in quick and make sure you don't miss out. So thanks to Clocks and Colors for sponsoring this video, but let's get on to distilling the gin. So we're gonna take two liters of our 70% ABV vodka and we're gonna mix in the 70 grams of botanicals. Now, put it into a somewhat, at least somewhat airtight container. These ones aren't completely airtight uh, and let that sit and macerate for 24 to 48 hours. Once maceration is finished, tip the whole thing, botanicals and all, into the still. Assuming your still can handle botanicals without scorching them, if it can't, obviously strain them out. Proof it all back down to just below 40% ABV and get the still running. Now for this little run, I'm gonna be using the Air Still by Still Spirits. I actually prefer using the little stainless steel still slightly more, but it's just a pain in the butt. I have to have running water for it 
and I have to have a little gas burner. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it's just easier to use the air still. And honestly, for stuff like this, it does a wonderful job. Once you have first drips coming off the still, I would suggest collecting a little bit to discard at the beginning. No, this isn't four shots. No, we're not making like cuts on the spirit. It's already a very nice vodka, so I don't need to do that. The point here is that sometimes, or more often than not, actually, in my experience, at the very beginning of the run, the botanicals just let off a bunch of really crazy, really harsh flavors. So I took, uh, for this one, about 80 mils of product uh, and ditched it before I started collecting the stuff that I was keeping. And I collected in total 1.3 liters of 81% ABV. That is, where's a dark, no, yep, here we go. That's that in freedom units. <laughs> Now it's time to prep the berries, which are gonna make the gin pink. I'm using two different little recipes here. Uh, one is gonna be a mix of strawberries and raspberries, and the other is gonna be blueberries. Yes, the blueberries are gonna be more like a, I don't know, like a purpley blue, I guess, not pink. That's fine, get over it. Anyway, for the strawberries, we're gonna be using 150 grams of strawberries and 100 grams of raspberries. For the strawberries, I just cut the, uh, the stems off and sliced them relatively thinly. Uh, for the raspberries, I just gave them a little smush, made sure there was nothing crazy on them, there's no like bugs or leaves, whatever, in the punnet, uh, and put those into a jar as well. For the blueberries, I just gave them a little smush, made sure they were kind of cracked open so the spirit can get access to the inside of the berry. Those went into two separate jars. Then I took the gin and proofed it back down to 70%. Remember it was just sitting at 80%. Proofed it down to 70% and just tipped enough of that 70% gin into each jar to make sure the berries were covered and let them macerate. How long do you let them macerate for? It's up to you and really it is uh, until it tastes good. Because honestly different ingredients, different berries, different things you use uh, at slightly different ABVs are going to macerate for different lengths of time. For the strawberries, I would suggest 24 to 30 hours seems like the sweet spot for me. The blueberries seem to be able to handle a lot longer time period, so 48, maybe even 60 hours for the blueberries. If you're using store-bought gin, this is the point where you can jump on in as well. Just be aware that you're going to be, let's face it, you're going to be using something that's sort of 40, maybe 45% ABV, Maybe you can get hold of a, a, a navy strength gin. That's great. Uh, but just be aware that your maceration times might be a little bit different because your ABV is going to be different. And obviously, guys, feel free to use whatever works for you. If you've got blackberries or boysenberries growing in the backyard, use them. It'll probably be delicious. Just have a think about the pairings of flavors uh, and whether or not you think they're going to work ahead of time. Maybe you can even do like a, a wee test batch and test it out before you jump on in. Once maceration is done, strain them, get all the particulates out, uh, and I was left with 300 mils of each. I decided to add another 150 mils of the base gin into each because both of them were just a little bit strong on the base berry flavor. Then you can proof it back down to the drinking percentage you want. For these, I went for a 40% for each of them. Uh, you can run the calculations. There is a link in the description down below to the Chase the Craft calculators that'll help you out with this. I would suggest you allow two to five percent drop in ABV uh, just based on the, uh, the, the, the water level, the, the liquid level in the berries themselves. And alchemeters are going to be no good to you now because uh, we have sugar in them. All right guys, so here is the, the base gin, the gin that I just made for this specifically. I decided to keep a bottle straight just, you know, for comparison's sake and tasting and so on and so forth and just for drinking because it's delicious. Uh, here is the blueberry gin and here is the strawberry and raspberry gin, but I ended up actually with one and a half each of, uh, of these bottles. So I decided why not just mix them. So this one is a combination, about 50-50% of each of these. Now I did say at the beginning of the video that there's some really shocking examples of pink gin out there. Uh, and the shocking ones tend to be uh, artificially flavored, colored, and with a buttload of sugar in them. Uh, but here's the thing guys, I actually did add 25 mils of simple syrup, <laughs> simple syrup into the strawberry uh, gin. And the reason for that was that I think I let the maceration go just a little bit too far and it started to get a little bit tart. While I have nothing against tart, it just didn't quite fit what I was going for with this gin. So it was 25 mils of simple syrup, <laughs> simple syrup, why can't I say that? Uh, one to one sugar to water. Uh, the blueberry gin, I decided not to put any sugar into because it just didn't need it. 
Uh, I don't want these tasting sweet. I don't want them being liqueurs. I want them being gins. Uh, but for this, it just needed a little bit of sugar to kind of balance it. And to be honest, it brought the, uh, the berry flavor out a little bit more. Coloring, coloring. Uh, here's the thing guys, if I leave these out and there's any light getting to them whatsoever and I don't drink them fairly quickly, they're gonna go kind of like a murky brown and then probably eventually just, they'll end up looking pretty close to this. So there is a reason that artificial colorings are used in these kinds of gins because if you want it to hold up and you want it to stay looking lovely, you just kind of have to do that. I toyed back and forth about this. I was going to add some some stuff into it. Uh, and in the end, I just decided what the hell, I'll just drink it quickly and make more. <laughs> so with that being said, let's do some tasting, shall we? And I think the first thing we should taste is this base gin, because that's gonna have a lot to say about what we taste later on, right? When I first made this gin, I was a little bit worried that I pulled out a disproportionate amount of um, the botanicals out of the bag. It's not Soren's fault, it was my fault. I bought 500 grams, you get the idea. Um, but after it sat for a while, it's come right, and by God, this is a really nice gin. There is definitely something to be said for um, sourcing ingredients that are fresh and for purpose. I've used uh, juniper berries that were given to me by someone who bought a kilo of them to cook some venison with and then didn't. I mean, they were probably three years old by the time I got them. They were fine, not great. So buying stuff like this and using botanicals like this from someone who does this for a job and knows all about it, it really does make a difference, guys. This is a somewhat aggressive gin just in terms of the total amount of uh, flavor coming through. It's not light by any means. It's got plenty of punch from the botanicals. The junis, juniper's sitting front and center the way I like it. It does sit slightly on the earthy side of things. It's not super bright and super citrus, uh, but we're gonna add a bunch of brightness in with the berries, remember? So I'm cool with that. Anyway, let's taste the strawberry pop. Wow, that was uh, spectacular. If anything, this has gotten slightly stronger in terms of the berries since it's been sitting. The other thing, when I first proofed it down, it got kind of muddy. It had a almost, um, umami's not quite the right flavor, but it was, it was borderline umami berry, I don't know, like a, like a berry vinaigrette or something. It was really weird. Uh, and I was a touch worried that it was going to stick around, but giving it a couple of days has totally sorted it out. And now we have a separate raspberry and strawberry aroma. That is fighting to be stronger than the gin, but I don't know. I don't know if it's quite winning that battle. The original gin does shine through on the palate, but then after it finishes, after you swallow, you're left with a long berry finish with the impression of sweetness. It is obviously not as dry, it's got a little bit of sugar added to it, and it also has the, uh, the sugar content from the berries themselves. But it is by no means, you know, getting through into liqueur territory. Anyway, hmm, had to be done. Blueberry! Now, to be honest guys, I kind of did this as a little bit of a, not filler, but you know, like to show that you can have options here. I thought this was going to be the star of the show, but, but, mm. I gotta say guys, I think I like this one better. <laughs> I like that I didn't have to add the sugar in and that's not purely a conceptual, like wanky, I didn't add sugar thing. It, it just, it finishes more like a gin. It drinks more like a gin. It's drier like a gin. Uh, and I kind of prefer that. And in some ways, the, the more earthy tones of the blueberry tie in more closely with the earthy tones of the original gin. I really like that. This is fun. To be honest too, guys, uh, blueberry is kind of one of the flavors that I struggle to detect. I know that I perceive blueberry to be less intense than a lot of other people. So this might be a blueberry bomb, and I'm just not getting it. That is a possibility. Uh, but man, the color is just awesome too. Like, that's really cool. I actually haven't tried the mix yet. I'm very interested to see how this plays. Huh, okay. I 
I take it back. This is my favorite. This is by far my favorite. Hmm. That's really good. There's more gin presence. The berries aren't as imposing as the strawberry, uh, but it has that slight hint of lingering mixed berry flavor that the strawberry has that the blueberry doesn't have so much to me. Like I said before though, that might be my inability to really taste blueberry. This to me is my favorite. It drinks like a gin. It looks really cool. The color's fun. Um, I haven't really cleaned the bottles though very well. So it looks kind of milky and cloudy, but it's actually not. <laughs> anyway, guys, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I get to do cool stuff like this because of you. I thoroughly appreciate it. I really freaking do. Uh, so thank you, guys. If you're finding value in these videos and you want to get involved, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways that you can help out. One of being uh, signing up for Patreon if it's right for you, or you can, of course, get the Still It merch. It's uh, on the website as well. If you enjoyed this video, or you're just a big fan of pink gin, uh, please give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that it's a good video and it should show the video to other people. And I would appreciate that very much. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying the video, sort it out guys, hit the subscribe button down below and, and I'll catch you next time. See ya. I'm gonna drink the rest of this. <laughs>